Well, yes, we're turning our attention to security matters, and uh, we're joined by Mr. Dennis Amakri, a former state security operative. Good morning, and thank you for joining us on the program today. Good morning. Right. Well, a lot unfolded yesterday, and still is uh, today, uh, we reckon, but uh, part of what transpired the attack on uh, his also on a Sunday Boho, his uh, place in Ibadan yesterday. The DSS eventually did speak, but um, looking at the circumstances and the information that they put out concerning who went there and uh, persons they paraded, uh, what impression do you have of this operation? Well, um, once more, thank you for inviting me. Um, it was a very good piece of intelligence work that, you know, the DSS uh, had in their possession. And, uh, of course, when they go in there, uh, they discover that what they um, knew was uh, actually in existence, whereby wa uh, weapons were all um, recovered from uh, that uh, premises. So, um, you know, like they say, if um, a diplomat or a non-state actor carries a gun, then he becomes a soldier. And uh, in that kind of situation, uh, they have to nip it in the board, so to say. You know, Mr. Makwe, uh, I mean, we look at international best practices and standards about how some of these things, raids, operations are carried out. And um, not that one has been utopian here, but, you know, when that attack happened, people around there didn't know who they were. They thought they were just gunmen or non-gunmen. Some referred to them as such, uh, not knowing where they were coming from. So there was that apprehension. Uh, at the time. And then uh, eventually there was that briefing. But if you look at some of the dailies here today, where some of the A's are saying that uh, the person spoke French fluently, uh, given perhaps an impression that they might have been persons other than state actors or even, uh, you know, authorized actors, should these kind of things be preceded or followed by um, images, accounts of operations and how it went through such that uh, they uh, seem to have complied with uh, the laws here, with best practices, so that people now are saying that, look, they didn't even know, they didn't even know that they were disoperative. They could have even shot back at them because some suggest it lasted for about an hour, that there was a gun battle, not knowing who they were. People may be bound to defend themselves. Uh, well, you know that um, I'm very happy that uh, the DSS actually came out to make that statement uh, so that uh, we move away from that uh, story of unknown gunmen who were speaking uh, fluent French and stuff like that. Uh, that tells you how people actually misuse the uh, social media. Uh, because um, who were those people? If uh, the DSS didn't come out, it would have escalated into a different thing where they would say, oh, yes, it was unknown... Uh, uh, foreign Fulani men who were speaking French fluently who came to attack uh, uh, Sunday in his uh, premises. So um, I'm happy that they came out to clear that out and, of course, um, also arrest uh, the arrested people who were paraded because uh, earlier it was said that they were kidnapped. You know, So these are all the kinds of, uh, um, should I say, uh, different kinds of uh, stories that uh, people put out to confuse the public. You know, early you know, hours after that particular invasion, attack, operation, whatever term has been used, happened, and we saw videos, people narrating what happened, you know, going around the house, taking shots of the home, gunshot. Uh, bullet holes in vehicles, you know, vandalization generally. And I mean, maybe that lent credence to the unknown gunmen attackers because people thought, would it be the DSS that would vandalize property this way? I mean, if it were to be an operation, or let me just ask you, I mean, those, I mean, the vandalism you saw, the bullet holes in the car and the rest, is that something the DSS will normally do in their operation? Uh, well, that story that they put out is not the modus operandi of uh, the DSS. In fact, actually, when they went in there, they were actually shouting that this is the DSS. Come out, open the gate. And, of course, what they received was uh, gunshots. You know, so um, I think they were also ready uh, to repel any kind of person that comes around there. But uh, at least they should have 
and um, uh, we uh, it's, it's doubtful when you look at it. Um, it's not a situation where uh, they will be shooting a movie, you know, and then they carry camera along with them, and then of course as they are. Entering the place, they will be shooting the. Um... Yeah, but, but Mr. Marker, we, we, we know these things. You don't have to be shooting a movie to have body cameras on uh, you. Yeah, you don't maybe have they, to. They, we'll they see didn't them carry body cams. Well, they we... didn't carry body cams, but. Um, did did they? Think... They didn't? No, they didn't. They didn't. Oh, okay. So this is not uh, where people will demand that. Because uh, now. We want to see pictures yeah, of because what now, actually what, happened. That part where you say they shouted that this is DSS, it, 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 it's, uh, it's arguable. People were arguing, no, they, we didn't hear that. And some would say we did. So these are the things that they needed to avoid this back and forth as to the mode of operation. Uh, maybe, maybe the DSS can go ahead and start acquiring some body cams so that people will not. Um, uh, start mistaking them for others, but they, they actually uh, returned fire because they didn't go there shooting into the place. Uh, there were some DSS uh, officers that were wounded, you know, so they won't say that they even don't have arms in that house. Yeah, you know, part of why we're asking about the mode of operation so people can understand. Because remember, because uh, uh, did you ask the EFCC chairman when he was here? There were images that circulated. Yeah, I think we remember asking him. Fake EFCC operatives went to an estate with a bus, a van, and a fake court injunction to take people's property out. Mm -hmm. So now, what if anybody just comes up, shows up in an apartment, this is DSS, open up. How do we know who's who? Uh, you open up and find out. If you don't have any skeleton in your cupboard, you shouldn't be afraid of the law. You know, only people who have uh, some skeleton in their cupboard will be scared of the law. Mr. Ivaku, was it out of to have at least invited him, at least send him an invite with which he would either respond or not. Was there such a case? Uh, this, this particular operation does not follow that pattern. Uh, I mean, I cannot, previously I to the gentleman, you. was it ever a thing, uh, you know, done that, you know, maybe Mr. DMO was invited to have a chat with DSS or something? Was there ever such a case? No, um, this, like I said, this uh, particular operation does not follow that kind of pattern. Uh, there were some intelligence reports that this guy is harboring weapons in his house. You know, I will not invite you and say, hey, come, come to our office, let's talk to you. We heard you have some weapons in your house. It doesn't follow that pattern because I, I, I want to then believe, you Mr. can Martin. hide it. Yeah, okay? I, 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 uh, I understand what you're saying, but I, and I, I agree with that. But I want to also believe that uh, Mr. Sunday Ademo didn't just become a person of interest yesterday. It must have been for quite a while. And I'm pretty sure that the DSS must have picked up on that kind of intelligence. That's the premise upon which I'm asking if there was ever a time that he was invited just to at least nip this in the bud before he got uh, to this level? He has been a person of interest. Was he ever course. invited during that time? Ah, well, there was no need uh, because, you remember, Nigeria is a democracy. There is free speech. And people have been having speech, um, you know, their own speeches around the place. Uh, he had had rallies in uh, different parts of the West, but he has not, you know, but at the same time, there was information that this guy that has been having rallies is also harboring some weapons. And of course, they have to go for those weapons. It reminds us of that joke where they talk about uh, free speech may be guaranteed, but freedom after the speech. It's not guaranteed. <laughs> I, so, like I said, a lot has gone out. We've seen videos, live streams, different accounts of this. I mean, he, Chamberlain referenced uh, the French-speaking uh, men that were said to have invaded uh, his house. Uh, just to be clear as well on the modus operandi of the DSS, they also said that uh, the two people that were killed, their bodies were taken away. Is that what the DSS would normally do? I don't know about that. Uh, what they paraded was the people that were arrested. I don't know about bodies being taken away. Uh, you have to remember by that particular statement, I think from uh, somebody who is a patron or somebody who was saying about um, the French-speaking people, um, his numbers were more. Uh, he, he said how many people were uh, kidnapped, he used that word, 
Uh, the wife of uh, Sunday was also kidnapped. And of course, they came out to tell uh, how many people were taken arrested. And of course, including a female. Maybe that's the woman that they were referring to as uh, Sunday's wife. But uh, I don't know about um, uh, taking bodies away. I so think the, the DSS will normally. It's not, not the modus operandi. To do what? Uh, to hide them or to bury them? No, I don't think that's the modus operandi. Okay. I mean, it's, it's just to get these details out there so people can at least. Yes. Hear from the different sides, but yes. I mean, people always make comparisons, and I'm sure you've probably seen some of them. People, on the one hand, are quite impressed that the DSS got intelligence and um, they acted on the intelligence they said they got. And I mean, you've seen people draw different inferences, talking about the banditry we are seeing, the spate of kidnapping, terrorism, and the rest. Saying, so what happens to intelligence in that area? How often does the DSS get intelligence so that it can act preemptively, such that we don't see the spate of kidnappings we're seeing, the bandits attack, even the killer herdsmen as well. So these comparisons have been drawn. So the question would be, how effective is, is a DSS also in those areas? Uh, well, um, you should, uh, you, you've been going through the news and you know how many people have been arrested, uh, some areas that have been bombed, uh, working with the Air Force and the Army. Uh, there's a synergy there that has, uh, you know, uh, bring out a lot of uh, results, especially recently after the change of um, service chiefs. So um, you will not know because um, there is no particular leader that they are looking for. But of course, you have had stories about uh, commanders of either Boko Haram or uh, Iswap that have been uh, uh, neutralized. So um, the, the, the fight is on. I think. Um, well, I'm very happy particularly because um, this area where the whole country is moving towards flames and then of course gradually, you know, we, we try to put a rain on it because uh, before it was like a free for all. Mm. Well, there are those in, in, in line with that same comment or question by Cardi. There are those such as the governor of um, River State, for instance, who would say that following the arrest of uh, Namdi Kano, uh, look, it's not just Namdi Kano, and some others will say it's not just Sunday Boho. There are other elements, you know, who have been, you know, ravaging the nation, and some of them are known. Um, uh, you, you heard the, the famous Islamic cleric saying that anytime he went to see the bandits, he went with security escorts of state. So, I'm just wondering if there was any further intelligence needed to pick up these people. Um, well, the army has even come out, come out to say that um, they don't agree with what Shegumi was saying. You know, so he can say his own. I don't know who escorts him there, but I don't think that uh, the security agencies will allocate operatives to follow him into um, uh, a bandit uh, hideout, and then you will have meeting with them and come out. I, I don't think that's their that's their way of uh, reacting. So, um, well, intelligence will go around, and then uh, when you have uh, security agencies, they don't just jump into it. They have to gather, and then of course look at it very well. Uh, reconfirm to make sure that it's uh, a credible one before uh, they go in uh, to strike. But uh, Mr. Macri, when he made this comment, a policeman was with him. So on that basis alone, I mean, this policeman got into his car with him and escorted him away. On that basis alone, shouldn't uh, the cleric have been, uh, have been at least invited to have a conversation with him on his claims? Well, I don't know this uh, policeman that was with him. Remember, when you see a police escort with uh, anybody, including big men, you know, those people are not uh, decision makers. Uh, those, those might, uh, even we might have situations where we have guns for hire. You know, it's very, very common where we here have uh, more poles, you know, who can be hired and follow. That does not mean that it was coming from the mainstream of authority in the police. So um, I don't know where he got it, but um, 
I, it might be even possible. I don't know because I'm no more in service. Uh, where there might be communication between Gumi and uh, uh, either the DSS or other uh, police intelligence uh, group. On you, you spoke about freedom of expression, and I think this is perhaps at the base or foundation of this case. I mean, this is a man that has canvassed for self determination. Clearly, a lot of people, groups, are behind him on that issue of self determination, saying, I mean, we want better, we want out, I mean, we can do better. And I mean, that's, 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 there's, there's, no, there's no sin in that. It's not illegal uh, to at least ask for self-determination. And I mean, it was in a build-up to a rally in Lagos, which by the way, the police has said she'll not hold. So there are questions about that freedom of expression. So let me just get your response to that. The police saying that that she'll not hold. Can we still say there's freedom of expression if people cannot say they want to hold a rally, not even a protest, yeah. a, a rally? Uh, there should be freedom of expression, there should be freedom of speech, and uh, I fully support it. Uh, in fact, from what is happening, including the arrest of Kanu, I think that the government itself should look further than that. There should be a deep dive and look into situations, the root causes, because right now what we're dealing with are the symptoms of what the real problems are. So, if... Um, uh, they, 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 they do a, a deep dive, they will now look at those problems that different agitations coming from different um, regions of the country. And I think they should do that. Uh, uh, but freedom of speech is, I think, is guaranteed. But, you know, this same Lagos uh, rally, um, of course, the police and the DSS have shared that same uh, intel uh, to show that this guy, although he's coming to Lagos, but he's been carrying arms. So we don't know what he's going to use them for. Well, many will pick up on that part where you say, you think freedom of speech is guaranteed, being a former <laughs> operative. But do you think that there should be a joint operation against bandits? Because there are many people who say, look, time and again, they know that uh, bandits are also armed with AK-47 rifle, domiciled in pockets of bushes where they are. Yes, of course. Uh, there have been uh, joint operations uh, between uh, the DSS, the police, even the army. Uh, there's, uh, there's a joint operation even with the NACDC. You know, but um, I, I feel it's taking a, lo a, lo a long time and it's taking a lot of uh, manpower and resources. Uh, they should uh, really face those people and take them out because we're having, uh, you know, it's not good for the country. I mean, speaking of what's good for the country, I mean, there are certain actions that are taken and you, you imagine the effect it will have across regions, within people, regarding stability, the peace and the rest. With this action taken by the DSS, I mean, looking at the coming days, the, 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 the comments you've heard from different groups, especially in the Southwest, Yoruba groups, uh, what are the you know, options you see? What are the things you see playing out in the coming days? Well, um, I, I think um, uh, the action of the DSS is preemptive. And then, of course, it's also a warning to all those who have been stockpiling arms uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, one important thing is that uh, we have a Moteku. You know, why is Sunday not operating with a Moteku? These are questions that should be asked. You know, but he's operating a separate thing, different from a Moteku, and then, of course, having all kinds of uh, automatic weapons. So uh, with all those kind of loaded uh, magazines, that means it's ready for war. And I don't think that is the way to go. Uh, if we people are going for self-determination, there are ways, there are peaceful ways of going about it. But does this say anything that, I mean, over time, he has been peaceful about this. He has, and he said it time and again. People have actually said it that he's always been peaceful about this. So th does that at least uh, lend some credence to his push for self-determination, that this is peaceful and not going to be violent? Okay, if it is peaceful, then he should also go ahead and answer the question why all those cashier of arms were found in his house. What was he planning to do with them? Well... 
Many will be looking to see how the authorities equally respond to threats posed by, you know, several persons to those who are legitimately going to their farms. But uh, I guess time will tell. Thank you very much indeed, Mr. Macri, for your perspective today. Thank you for having me.